Good evening, welcome back to Carpa Blue Fishing. Recently done a video on anchor setups, how I set up my anchor, the reasons why I, I made the choices that I've made in my setup. And this is a similar thing, it's the reasons why I choose to retrieve the anchor in the, in the methods that I use. But I think that's where we see a lot of beginners make mistakes is in the anchoring and, and bits and pieces. It is when we're at our most vulnerable and one of our most likely chances of um, getting it wrong. So please watch the video, please take your time to leave a comment, like and subscribe. And you know, check out some of the other videos in the series. So if you haven't seen my previous video, it's up here. And um, yeah, stay safe and hopefully one day I'll see you on the water. Cheers. Okay, so if you saw my first video, I'd use a little gateway clip, a carabiner clip, um, and the trolley right to the back, right to the front. Now, the reason I use this is just because it's the easiest way to attach the anchor because we don't attach the anchor to this it runs through this whether I'm using a quick release or a fixed anchor so let me just show you what I mean okay and this is what I keep my anchor line on which is a reel so I haven't got pulls and pulls of loose stuff I've given it a bit of leverage a little bit of length to it which you'll see in one of my videos out of sea in a minute and um, another little clip and then the chain just runs through there so if George was just to push that little button there, that just releases the anchor all the way to the bottom. Now once the anchor's at the bottom, we continue to let line out, but we shimmy this clip to the back. So, this works its way to the back, and then that holds the kayak into the tide. So this line would come out the back like this. So the line would come out, and I'd say two to three times the depth. I use a longer length of chain than most. I just prefer it. It means I can get away with a little bit less warp out. But also the chain is what makes it an anchor. I.e. it holds the nose down. If you're not holding the nose down, you're just dropping a weight. Okay, I would then lock it off in the cleat. And I'd probably just hang that over the side if it's not rattling around too much. If it's making a lot of noise, I've put this inside the kayak somewhere. But you can also anchor off the, uh, the trolley line as well if you like. But that generally doesn't move. Okay, quick release anchor. It's exactly the same setup, except I've clipped a buoy and a length of line onto the end of it. Now this suspends the anchor line in the tide behind the kayak and the line runs back up through the carabiner which again we tr always trolley to the back and then i just hook it over the top of my cleat now the good thing about this is if i just unclip it like that i'm free to find safety to go off for a bit of lure fishing or um, just go and take a photo of a friend's fish or something like that. Or just um, have a 30 second break from what I'm doing. I can return to that spot or I can retrieve the anchor. Anyway, I hope that's of some use and let's see it in action on the water. Thank you. Okay, pulling in the anchor um, without a quick release buoy. Now it's important that you don't pull the trolley to the side, particularly in quite a big tide like this, spring tide today. So in the spring tide, I like to do it like this, which is basically put this in free spool and trolley this to the front. Trolley it to the front. Now I'm drifting now, but where I trot it to the front and I lock it up, now the tide's gonna catch that in a minute. And then, see it swinging the kayak round. Okay, so now the advantage is I'm pulling from the front. I can see what I'm doing. Now I'm pulling from the front. I feel in control. I also have a bit of an advantage of having a set of pedals that can help me take out the slack if I want to. 
but uh, some of you won't have that but you can still pull and wind and I keep the reel in between the knees so like this I don't end up with piles of slack in my kayak I don't end up pulling from the side where if something catches or you get in a bit of a mess you can tip out out the other side so anyway that's what I do hopefully for some use when you get the cut the anchor off the bottom because obviously you've got a lot more warp out than, than it going straight down two to three times a depth when you get it off the bottom and you're clear of the bottom you can trolley it to the side to lift it in so she's off the bottom now just pulling the weight of the anchor the chain and everything but i can now undo my zigzag plate just pull out the last bit of warp the chain the anchor So we don't ever want to be lifting from the middle of the kayak in the tide. That's why we've got it off the bottom first from the front of the yak. Anyway, I hope I've made sense. But that's my preferred way of doing it. Um, with a quick release system, do another video on that. It's a little bit different, but uh, many ways, same principle, just never from the side. Of course, I've only got the 40 foot of warp with the last, well, last 20 foot warp I suppose. Really long. Job done. Cheers. So here it is again. Anchor retrieval on a spring tide at, at Beachy Head. Um, to avoid getting the kayak side on and putting myself at any risk, we'll give it a go. I've got my zigzag cleat to one day and I'm going to put this onto free spool so I can control this. So that's ready. And I literally I'm gonna trolley this to the front with it on free spool. So there's no tension on the kayak. Then it's at the front, lock everything back up. And what you can't see is I'm already being pulled round very quickly in the tide as that tension comes back on. But the advantage is everything's in front of me where I can see it. I'm in control. I'm pulling it, so I'm pulling from the front of the boat, not not the back where I can't see behind me, not the side where I'm at risk of coming out. The other thing that I've adapted to do is I've got this pole. I stick it between my legs. I've got a set of third hands then, which is quite useful at times. The other thing you can do is you can chuck it out the back like that let the tide straighten it up but you can end up occasionally in a little bit of a tangle once I got the chain to the top can just undo the cleat again bring it to the side she's all mine no mess, just the last bit of warp. So, there you go. Okay, so here I am retrieving a quick release anchor. So I've released from the anchor and now I'm going back to pick her up. And what I'm going to use is the momentum of the kayak to go past the 
the boy and this time I shall clip the boy on the anchor side and now I'm trolling it back to the front as I did in the previous um, demonstrations and then I should just lock it off on the front and I'll start to retrieve it as normal you see here we're on the river Tamar and the tide is pulling the kayak round see that guys the drogue um, reason we deployed that is uh, crosswind every now and then it just blows me right over there into that boat and then I get all in a mess and all the lines start crossing each other and that's your solution works a treat the only other time I really use the drogue is when I'm not at anchor and the wind is causing me to drift so it will slow up a wind based drift because of the resistance of the water. However, obviously, if there is a tidal flow, you would be pulled in the direction of that flow. I still find them a useful piece of kit to have.